and it does look like a motor because the gap that's about to open up right now is like Mandingo on a 45 kilo freshman. You know, it's just the gap is about to get big. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> this is insane. All right, let's get stuck into it. Just saw this on Lanton's channel. The I think I've done a video of this a while ago. Let's do a recap. Let's do a recap. This is the bike Cancellara used. It's a Chinese-made, specialized S-Works SL3. Oh, I've had one of these bikes before. Fantastic bike. The only issue is it's proprietary fork, so it can be an issue getting spares if you could crush one. SRAM 10 group set, which are one of my favorites. Zip throw three wheels, great rims. The hubs are definitely dire. They blow up and crack. A lot of recalls on them. Anyway, that's the bike. Super light, super fast. Let's get to the race here. This is Tour of Flanders in Belgium. And uh, here we have Cancellara in the red, who's we know who's going to win it. It was infamous. It was... You know, he created a lot of uh, clickbait titles. We had Cookie Man in his book said that Cancellara used a motor, and it did look like that. Let's get into it. We've got Stuart O'Grady there, Adelaide local. Um, we've got Garmin Savella, I think it's Dan Martin there. Just finished, he's on his break, school break from lunch. And uh, we got here the breakaway, which is always a tradition. The riders go out in front, give it a camera time. None of these riders here, even though they're, you know, very, very strong professional riders, they're not deemed as favourites for the race. So they're sort of given, you know, a bit of free publicity time by the, the heads of state, to, to say, uh, at the back here. So we've got the Saxa Bank, Bjarna Reese's team. Bjarna's in the phone on the team radio saying, Oh, Grady, earn your cookies. Let's go. Let's bring it on. So they're controlling the pace, basically just trying to show, shell out any, just thin the bunch, basically. This is like a whippersnipper in the garden. Oh, Grady's doing a whippersnipper job to thin the peloton back, get rid of any any dead weight and this is the beautiful roads here in belgium i've lived in this area in the flanders i did a lot of racing here in 2003 cobbles it's a definitely a shock to the system so great is he's on the front he's blowing his blowing his lungs there using his 90 vo2 max to set the pace You've got maddie breschel there in the red as well it almost looks like they're like a doppelganger it's like that's got the same jersey what 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 jersey is that red and white i don't know forgive my geography and then uh breschel's just flying up this mate he's looking back if you can look back, you are doing it easy. Because looking back really shunts your breathing here. Shunts your breathing here. We've got to pause here. Thanks, Land Rouge. You, you can go see Matt, uh, Matty Heyman. I remember doing a race with Matt Heyman uh, back in 2001 in Canberra. He turned up in his full rubber bank kit, rubber bank Colnago, rubber bank Musette. And I remember sort of making a bit of a snide joke. I'm like, who's this guy in a rubber bank kit and he's got a rubber bank Musette? Like, he must be a big rubber bank fanboy. And one of the local guys said, no, that's Matt Heyman. He actually rides for Rubber Banks, his first season of Rubber Bank. And I'm like, oh, okay. And anyway, Matt Heyman did the crit, and I think he, I think he lapped us. <laughs> a great crit, just totally shredded it. And I was like, okay, interesting. That was that was pretty uh, pretty amazing effect there. So here we got Boonen here. Look at Boonen's face. He's really on the absolute limit. Matty Breschel, relaxed face. Boonen already on the, you know, pushing, pushing. Got a stun rider there, about to get caught. He's got full leggings on. He's cold. Look at Boonen. You know, no, has he got gloves? Looks like he's got no gloves. So how does an Astana rider from Kazakhstan, who's used to the cold, have full kit on, and Boonen's out for a summer ride? No gloves, no winter jersey, no jacket, nothing. Look at these guys up front. They've got leggings on and full winter gloves, and Boonen's got nothing. So Boonen's thermic effect... His dietary thermogenesis is peaking. His metabolism is just radiating heat. Look at that. FDJ rider, winter gloves, long sleeve. Boonen's like, mate, it is summertime. Guy out there pulling over for a leak. You know, Team Sky there, Adidas kit before the Rafa. Man in black started. And uh, we've got Matty Breschel here. Look at that. There's, this is pretty bad. What's, what are you doing? Why are you dragging Tom Boone? Look at it. Look at his life. What is going on here? He, should, he oh, what is going on? Why would you pace, like, what you do is you ride at 200 watts and you force Boonen, who's the opposition, to go to the front. Oh, what's he doing? Like, he's just been pacing. He's still pacing him. He's still pacing him. That is how, like, I, you know what I mean? That baffles me. You can be a professional cyclist, like a really, really strong professional rider and make noob cat three memed, uh, riding tactics like that, like, why would you pace Tom Boonen, you know, who's your teammate's nemesis, why would you pace him like that, ride at 200 watts, 
Force Boone to come around, get on Boone and Will, mark the wheel, you're good to go. It's crazy. Look at this, Team Sky on the front, the Team Sky Arrowhead sprinting, sp sprinting into the corner here for the start of the climb. You, look at that. You can appreciate how hectic that is. Imagine that. Sprinting into the climb. Looks like Jill Burr on the left there. And now they've got to smash out this climb. Look at them. Look at them. Out the front. You know what I mean? Like crazy. Just Can you imagine that? That's the fitness level and the skill level. You need to be a professional rider to win a race. And even today, it's even more cutthroat. Sprinting into the corner. Sprinting to get position. And then on the front, just driving it. Everyone here is just... You know, they're probably, watts, they're probably doing like 450 watts. It's a short 500 meters. So probably like a, a one minute climb. So, uh, yeah, one minute 20 climb. So probably, yeah, more like 550 watts. Just driving it, driving it. You know, seven watts per kilo plus on this climb. Actually, probably more than seven watts per kilo. They're sort of bunching up a bit here. We're now sort of spread out. We've got Jill Burr on the attack looking for that team contract for 2011. Looking around and just now they're sort of relaxed a bit into the corner. Strung out, they're starting to feel a bit of fatigue there. This is insane. This is 63k to go. And look at the radio shack. It looks like Yaroslav Popolot on the back, and he is getting out the back almost. We have here Johnny Hugeland. This is pre barbed wire fence thighs. He now he has a lot of scum in that barbed wire fence. He got shunted by the Shimano car or the team car or the radio car into the. This is insane. Just goes to show you how disposable, unfortunately, how disposable you are. As a pro athlete, you are simply just a marketing piece. You are a marketing pawn, and they will spit you up, chew you up, and spit you out with no regard for your health, well-being, or safety. It's crazy. Anyway, we've got Maddie Breschel here, mechanical. Looks like a rear flat tire, and they just do a bike swap. They're like, who cares? And then, boom, and now he's got to go back. We also know that here that Saxa Bank rider has been told to, hey, wait up for Matty Breschel. So it does seem to be like Matty Breschel was maybe going so well. His hemoglobin was so well that day. They're like, hey, you could be a backup for this. And he, it was true. He was riding so strong. Matty Breschel was riding so strong. He was dragging Tom Boonen up the climbs. <laughs> And here we go, Boonen, uh, Boonen here is getting in the Belgium jersey, getting a bit boxed in. We've got Lickle Grass, HTC rider right here. And um, looks like uh, Bernie Eisel, I think. And look at that, Cancellara, you know, really on it. Look at Boonen's grinding. Boonen's grinding. He's just jackhammering. His quads are just jackhammering those speed play pedals. Cancellara, the Swiss ballerina on the pedals. The 85 kilo Swiss ballerina. Look at that cadence there. And Boonen's cadence is matched now. Boonen's mechanics should have been fired. You know, I say it in a nice way, but... I shouldn't say fired because no one wants to lose their job. The Boonen's mechanics should be reprimanded for putting a flat lander. This isn't Gent Weevilgum. This is Parry. Uh, this, is, oh, this isn't Parry Bay. This is Flanders. You need some cadence there. Cancelaro had a big fat 28 cassette there. And Boonen's cassette, I'm not sure what's going on there, but he's got a Parry Bay cassette. And look at this. This also just goes to show you how bunk the uh, endurance bikes are for the cushion and all that stuff. Cancelaro was using the SL3 tarmac. Now, if you've owned one of those, you know. They're a pretty rigid bike. You do feel the bumps and cushion. This is cobblestones. I've ridden, I've raced in these exact cobblestones, and they are not forgiving. They're not Paris Bay cobbles, but they're not forgiving. They're aggressive, but these guys are going for the lightest weight possible. And this is back in 2010, where you can really choose what equipment you got, relatively speaking. Unlike today, you've got to ride these heavy banker barrister disc brake aero bikes with, you know, it's just insane. Anyway, we've got, look at the gear ratios here. Boonin's really spinning it now he's, he's dropped his cadence uh so he's up his cadence dropped his gears down spinning it we've got uh vina kurov on the front or well, vengus vina kurov's his second cousin and he's in that winter kit he's got the, he's got a winter jacket on you know I mean, look at that and we've got a rubber back rider here quick step on the front blocking there a bit of blocking looks like uh fletcher in sky there their classics rider uh, and matt Heyman as well i'm not sure what matt Heyman is maybe he's taking a call from canberra but either way, look at this. Look at look at Boonen's face. This is the look at Boonen's face. He is really in the hurt world. This is 37k in. If you look, so I'm just got a rebel whopper coming up. If you look at the posture here of Cancellara and Boonen, you know, these guys here at the back just really on it. Look how hard they're trying at the back. They're chasing it. Jill Burr has got the Doberman teeth going on there. He's rottweiling up the climb. He really wants to leave his mark here. Mark his scent on this climb, on this race. And he's just finding another gear and going for it. Now, look at 
Boone at the back, he's out the saddle. He's just, you know, he's feeling awkward on the bike as much as he could be. And look at that, he's going moving to the front. He's look at that gear he's in. You know, look at Kane Salah, look at the ballerina footsteps, man. He's playing Tootsie with those S Works SRM BB30 OSBB creaky cranks. Look at that. Look at the Tootsies going on here. And look how relaxed he looks. He looks ready to spring like a springer spaniel. And Boonen, look at Boonen. He's really squirming in that saddle. He's really got that tip. You know, he's got his mushroom tip hanging off the end of that tip. And he's really just squirming in the saddle. But look at Cancellara. He's just like, yep, yeah, I'm, pa- I'm ready. In- Cancellara is looking down like he's a bit impatient. Like, when are we going to start this race? Boonen is just hanging on. He's thinking, man... I've got to hang on to the sprint and I've got to try and hose him. Look at this. Uh, we're coming up to the infamous. The infant Boone looks down to see if he's in his last gear. And he is. He's in his last gear. Cancellar has still got a few cogs to go. And we're going to see the difference between cadence and glycogen versus grinding. And look at that. Boone is in his... Look at that. Look at the, the, the size difference in cassettes here. You know what I mean? Kate, oh, man, this is insane that pros still make this mistake even today in 2020. Look at that. Boone is out the saddle already. He's grinding. Look at the cadence there. Differences. Look at that smooth. Look at, again, we see Tootsie land. Tootsie. The Tootsie fly is landed on the speed play pedals of... Uh, look at that. Look at this. Look at the cadence already. The differences. Look at... Here we go again. This is, look at this getting magnified here. Look at the grinding. Boone is really... He's starting to bonk. He's just... Look at his quads just flexing and rippling in this in the Flanders sunshine here. It's been a replay here. Look at this. And this is where people say, oh, that Cancellara has hit the button and kicked in his motor. There's no motor here, in my opinion. I can understand why people think that, but this is a classic example. Boonen is bonking. He's running out of muscle glycogen. He's running out of muscle glycogen. He's all over the bike. He's wrestling. His gears are way too hard. And Cadence King, Cancellara. Fabian Cancellara Cadence. Fabian Cadence Cancellara. You know? Look at that, man. If you want an example of cadence and carbs, 2010 Flanders is a highlight of that. You know what I mean? And it does look like a motor because the gap that's about to open up right now is like Mandingo on a 45 kilo freshman. You know, it's just the gap is about to get big. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> this is insane. That's like a, a Mandingo gap on a 4 foot 10, 45 kilo freshman from Santa Barbara University. It is insane. Look at that. Look at that gap, man. Look at that. You could park a set. You could park the team bus within five seconds of that gap. Look at that over the top. Look at that. You know what I mean? That is insane. <laughs> that is insane. Now, uh, Boonen's quote was, I was riding at 55k an hour. I couldn't do nothing. C- Cancellara just rode away. Now, Cancellara is a very good time trialist. Won the world champs. Boonen, not so much. Boonen, incredible rider. Paru Bay King, you know. Tour of Flanders, Green Jersey Tour de France, lots of sprints. Cancellara didn't have that sprint power. And if you don't have the sprint power, that comes to time trial power, a bit of climbing progress. So you can see here that Cancellara is a bit skinnier, he's a bit scrawnier than Tom Boonen, who looks, Tom Boonen almost looks like a heavyweight kickboxer in this race. Obviously in real life they're pretty skinny, but in Lycra, the Lycra adds 20 pounds, 20 kilos. And, uh, you know, I've ridden with Boonen before. In real life he's, a, you know, when he's, when he's in form, he's a pretty skinny dude. But here in this in this video, he does look like be like a Cat Three, TRT bodybuilder, kickboxer sort of dude who's just taken up cycling in his first year. He does have a lot of muscle mass on him. Whereas you look at Cancellara, he's got the thighs, he's got the the the, the quads, but he's got skinny little calves. He's got a big thoracic area. He's got reasonably skinny little biceps. His biceps are as skinny as his forearms. Now you can see here, he's got the tip of his nose exactly over his front zip hub. Fortunately, this hub isn't a recall hub because that could be the end of the race. And he's got his 10 speed. We're going to slow-mo here. Look at the the grace here. Look how he's breathing. He's hardly even breathing there. He's got a big expanded Zeppelin-esque thoracic area. But his gut there, I think it was that Eddie Merckx. It looks like Eddie Merckx in the Maltini jersey. Just, just doing a checkup there. But look at the thoracic capacity there. I don't see much Zeppelin gut going on there. If you look at Lance Armstrong, Lance Armstrong, Jan Uwek, they had that big Zeppelin gut going on there. Cancellar was hardly even breathing. Now look at this. Look how relaxed he is. He goes to the back of his jersey. You know, he's so lucid, he's aware of the cameras. Look at him. Mouth closed. Hands off the bars. Let's do that. Who's chasing you? Tom Boonen. Where you at? End of Flanders. Let's have a little Christmas tree decoration. Let's pull it out for the camera. Let's smile. I'm not even sweating. Mouth closed. I look back. Where's Tommy boy? Can't see him. 
let's continue. This is insane. The level of advancement on VO2 max and glycogen nutrition partitioning that day is insane. Now, he's got his hands up. He's like, you know what I mean? It's insane, man. It's insane. He's got his hands on his head. He's looking down at his stem. He's thinking, mate, we just ripped this whole race up. Specialized, wet, wet, you know, having a wet dream there in marketing. They're thinking, what can we say? And Specialized spam this win all over the bike magazines and the web, as they should. Crazy. Grabs the Swiss flag. Super lucid. No power bay crashes here. And uh, on the final lap, just look at that. Just flying the flag. Look how lucid he looks. He's swapping the hands over. You know what I mean? There's no, zero fatigue. There's zero fatigue. That he, His glycogen looks as full as it was in the start line. Look at that. Hands up in the air. Just cruising around. Holding the flag. Probably doing like 40k an hour. And holding the flag. It's not an easy feat. You know what I mean? Because he can throw you off balance. Look at that. Hand, look, where is Boonin? Boonin's missed the bus. Look at that. Look at the gap, man. For my friends, I don't think there was a motor involved. I just say he had... Really good blood that day, as you have to, as anyone does. And I'd say his glycogen levels, look at Boonin. Boonin looks like a broken man. He's like, what just happened? Give me some jelly beans. Boonin, you know, he lost the race there. Um, I wouldn't say that Cancelaro won it as much as Boonin lost it. Boonin's a better sprinter. It's a flat air finish. You know, it's just one climb to go. But then again, Cancellara is a superior time trialist. But Boonin, man, he was definitely bonking. The gap was huge. You don't just you, know, you don't create a gap that big unless Boonin has bonked. He's run out of glycogen, you know. Maybe even water as well. Maybe he was cramping up. But I don't think he was cramping up because if you're cramping up, you can't be getting out of the saddle sprinting. You just, you, you, you cramp up and you'll be off the bike. I would say that Boonin uh, was just out of muscle glycogen. And you can see in his face, he was just really just like... Oh, man, I'm just out of here. And look at Cancellara, his face. Another thing is, Boonin's face is white, all right? He's normally a pretty tan guy. He's ghost white. Cancellara has got the, the Monaco tan going on, which is another indication. When you run into glycogen, your face goes a bit white. You get a bit like lightheaded, like Matthew Van Der Poel in uh, that Rainy World Championships last year, 2019. Where was that? New Hampshire, up in there. <laughs> Manchester, wherever it was, in the UK somewhere, in the cold shitty UK, wherever it is, it's all the same. So it's cold and grey. Excuse the uh, excuse the French there. But that's basically it. Not enough muscle glycogen. Was there a motor involved? I'm going to say no. Who knows? Maybe there was. But I'm going to say there wasn't. I'm going to say it was cadence. We saw that. We're also going to say that we did see um, yeah, the muscle glycogen in the face. We saw the strain on his face as well. You know, riding an e-bike, um, you know, myself, it's it doesn't really look like it because, you know, I would say he just bonked. But again, that's my opinion. I wouldn't put put my life on it. But i definitely say that that day was some very good um, blood volume, some superior glycogen partitioning, and that's about it. And Boonin would say, I would say, he just didn't eat enough carbs and didn't get enough water in. And his cadence was just way too low, you know. Because look how far they were from everyone else. It's it's hard to remember that there was actually, you know, 150-odd professional cyclists at the back there. You know, it seems like a racist to two people. Anyway, that's the deal. Leave your comments, questions down below. And uh, back in the day when bikes were light, 